Welcome everybody to the Train Wreck Podcast, Episode Eight. We are back after a month-long vacation, and the reason we're back after so long is because I've been dealing with COVID for about the last month, so haven't really had the energy to do a podcast. And you know, it's hell. Most of the time, I was either sleeping or just dying. So. Yeah, I wasn't going to make for an entertaining show with me laying in bed and then having the three other awkward dudes just sitting here talking about hentai, so we just didn't do any shows. <laughs> for real. We but can't talk about would... our host. Yeah. <laughs> so, Drew, how you been, bro? I've been good. I've been good. Just, uh, we don't know just, where... sl- just slaving away for my wage. Yeah, we we don't know where the other two are. Adam's probably jerking off, and I think Curtis is dead. So we're just being a bunch of bitches right now. Dude, if Curtis would have caught what I would have had, he would have died. <laughs> yeah. But I want to explain what's been going on for about the last month. So the first week that we missed the show, I wasn't really sick. I had a double ear infection. And so I didn't want to record with headphones on. And plus, we didn't really have anything to talk about. So I'm like, okay, we can miss a week. It'll be fine. Um then that next Tuesday is when I started having these coughing fits. Like I didn't have like a stuffy nose or anything yet. I was just coughing really freaking bad. And I'm like, dude, we ain't going to be able to do a show if I'm coughing like this. But usually we record on Tuesdays. But that night, I think Drew had to work. So we were going to do it on Wednesday. So that night I was still feeling good. So I went out to a friend's house and they live about an hour away from here. And that day I had went to Walmart earlier and gotten two new tires put on because I knew I was going to have a long drive and my tires were getting pretty bald. So I go and get these tires put on. On my way back home, I kind of had to go off the road a little bit because a semi almost ran me off the road. I was coming onto the on-ramp onto the turnpike and the semi was definitely going more than 55 because it was a construction zone they were definitely going at least 75 so they are coming back behind me with a head of steam and i'm not picking up speed that fast yet because um i don't know what my car was doing so i go off to the side and i hit something and that tire pops well i didn't know the tire had popped brand the tire i had just gotten that day by the way um, I didn't know it had popped until my car started making that noise when your tire pops, you know? Yeah. Um, so I drove probably 20 miles on it before I realized it popped. And then I'm like, oh, fuck, I knew something was wrong back then. And so I look and the tire is smoking because I was going like 70, you know, on the turnpike. And I'm like, oh, shit. And the road i pulled off on was like on a hill and it was rocky so i couldn't put a car jack underneath it to put a spare tire on you know because it was too uneven i'm like if i do this i'm gonna i might tip my car over or screw up because this jack's not on an even ground so i'm like i'm gonna have to get a tow truck home and meanwhile this is at 11 at night And I'm about 30 minutes away from home. And I try to call the customer service line on my insurance. And it's nothing but, you know, automated bull crap. And then whenever you get on the other side, it's someone that doesn't speak English. I found out actually you could just do it online, like order a tow truck. And if you type in the details, it'll dispatch it to you. And I thought it was kind of sketchy, but it was actually a really good process. So I was pleasantly surprised by that. But after I complete that, it says, it'll be about three hours before a tow truck gets to you. And I'm like, oh shit, (laughs) I'm going to be here a while. And I'm like, It's 11 at night. I was getting tired. And one thing my mom's always told me to do is have a blanket in your trunk just in case you're in a spot where, you know, your car dies and it's freezing, you know, at least you have a blanket. So 
I get the blanket out of my trunk and I'm like, I'm going to be rain- waiting here for a while. And meanwhile, I'm still having coughing fits and starting to not feel good. And I drive a Ford Fusion, so it's not like the most spacious car. But I get in the back seat and I lay and I'm kind of in like the fetal position because my feet don't fit all the way, you know, laying in the back seat. But and I'm coughing my freaking lungs out. And I'm like, dude, I'm so tired. And I've never slept in my car before. But I took the passenger front seat and I leaned it all the way back and I put my feet over it so I could stretch them out, you know, and I fell asleep. Yeah. Like, like I just used my arms as a pillow and about four hours later, the tow truck shows up and I had been asleep the whole time. And the only reason I woke up is because he was knocking on my window and I guess my windows had fogged up from me breathing in that out, you know? Oh, shit, like, really? Like, I don't know if you've ever had sex in a car, but like your windows fog up and stuff. And, <laughs> um, no, I guess I never have. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, a lot of it's from your breath and all that. So, my windows are fogged up. So, the dude couldn't really see until he shined a flashlight through my front uh, window and he could see someone sleeping in the back of the car. <laughs> and so, he knocked on my freaking car window and he's like, hey, dude. I can't load your car up with you sleeping in here. And I'm like, dude, are you sure? Cause I really don't feel like getting up. <laughs> he's like, yeah. And so I get in uh, the cab of his tow truck while he loads my car up. Cause I'm like, I'm not standing on the side of the road. I was about to fall back asleep and I get in the cab and I was about to fall over, but he could loads my car up and we're about 30 minutes from my house drives yeah. there and i'm like dude do you need anything from me whenever we pull up to my house like do i have to sign any papers or anything he goes no your insurance takes is taking care of it all i'm like cool i'm just gonna go inside my house and go sleep while you unload my car <laughs> <laughs> and so get home around 3 30 fall asleep and then I wake up at around nine and then that's when it hits me. Like my nose is plugged up. I'm coughing really bad. I have a headache from hell. And whenever I had some McDonald's, I threw that bitch up. Mm. So I'm like, oh, I'm sick. And the reason I knew it was COVID is because last year when I had it, I would get extremely freaking hot. Like my body would get so freaking hot that it felt like you could cook stuff on me you know and then i would get extremely cold where it felt like i was like living in the ac you know yeah right before you got the covid i got a real bad flu really yeah i thought i gave it to you but when i tested it it it's just flu Mm. so i i knew it was covid because this is it's the exact same way i felt last year except this time i felt worse like last year I was still able to eat and stuff like that. And I only felt bad for like a week, but this time around I did not eat for like four days. Like, Ugh. and like, I mean, I would force myself to eat, but it wasn't like much, you know, like it was like little salads and like my mom, she got me a hash brown from McDonald's. And I took one bite of it and it tore my stomach to pieces. And so I'm like, yeah, I'm not doing food and I can't do grease. It was only salads for like three days. And I would eat maybe like this much, you know, not that much. Yeah. And at first I'm like, okay, I'll be over this in a week. Like last time. Then a week goes by and I've not improved in, at all. Like I am just as bad. I'm not eating. I'm sleeping almost all fucking day because I have no energy. And yeah, nothing's working. Like Tylenol's not working. Nothing. And so my mom's like, okay, you're. I'm forcing you to go to the doctor. And I really don't like going to the doctor that much just because I feel like they push a lot of pills on people, you know. That's yes. one reason I don't like going to the doctor and that, and you're just around a bunch of depressed people because they're either sick or hurt. You know, I just don't like going to the doctor, but <laughs> yeah, it is a very depressing environment to go in. Yeah. 
So I'm like, okay. She's like, you have to go. And I'm like, well, nothing we're doing here is working. So maybe I can get some antibiotics or something, even though there's not much they can really do for COVID. Yeah. And I get there and they're like, okay, we're going to test to make sure it's COVID or the flu or whatever. And they stick the thing in my nose and that was all right. Just cause I had so much snot in my nose that it was lubed up for them. Yeah. That's what they did to me when I got tested for flu. Really? They shoved it bitch right in my nose and I hurt like a motherfucker. Then they swabbed my mouth. And as soon as she put that in my mouth, I fucking puked and I almost puked on her and I would have oh, felt horrible man. about it. Cause she was an old lady. But I seriously took my hand and I pushed her out the way. And so I don't think they got a good sample from me. Um, But yeah. And she's like, can I get you anything? I'm like, can I please have some water? And um, and then they bring someone in to clean up that stuff. And and then they're like, okay, we'll be back with your test results. And like 15, 20 minutes goes by. And they come back and I'm about to like pass out on the freaking um, bed that they have in doctor's offices, you know? Yeah. Cause my body temperature is sky high. Like I am so fucking hot right now. Like I am, I feel like I'm playing football and I'm not moving a muscle. And when they tested my, my heart rate, you know, like when they check your vitals, my yeah. blood pressure was really low. But my pulse was 140. Really? Yeah, my pulse is <coughs> never over 100. So my pulse was extremely high, but my blood pressure was low, which I'm like, how does that make fucking sense? Um, so then they come back after like 20 minutes, and they're like, you tested negative for everything. And I'm like, bruh. Can y'all not see me, hear me, or look at me? Meanwhile, <laughs> you know, the other thing is, you know, they weigh you whenever you go to a doctor. Last yeah. month, I was at 210. I was at 195 when I went to the doctor. So I'd lost 15 pounds in like two weeks. That was the other thing. I'm like, yeah, that I'm, should have been a clear sign. Yeah. But they come back and they're like, you tested negative for everything. And I'm like, I mean, I'm obviously sick, you know, I'm like, unless I got some new disease that you guys don't know what the fuck it is. There's, I'm like, I told him like, I got COVID and I know it's COVID. But the lady's like, I'm going to look at your throat real quick. I'm like, okay. And she's like, say, ah, I'm like, ah, and she goes, I think you got tonsillitis. And I start laughing my fucking ass off. (laughs) <laughs> and she's like, what's so funny? And I'm like, I don't have tonsils. And she's like, oh. And then she goes, then it's strep. And I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> so I've had strep before and it doesn't feel like this. No. So, and then I looked on the paper and it said I had acute tonsillitis. And I'm like, Okay. These people are fucking morons. (laughs) And I know your tonsils can grow back because my aunts did. Um, Yeah. But it's extremely rare and mine have it. (laughs) Because I had my mom look and she's like, your tonsils aren't back. I'm like, I know they're not. And I'm just irritated as fuck because I just felt like we wasted a shitload of time to not not really get help, you know? (laughs) But, yeah, I'm irritated because I feel like we just wasted time. And they diagnosed me with, or they prescribed me some antibiotic. And I'm like, okay. And it's like, take it twice a day and you'll feel better. And I don't know what it was, but it dehydrated the shit out of me. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And it didn't really work. I took it for a week. And, I mean, I'm still getting it over it, you know. (laughs) Because they gave me the stuff I didn't need. I had the exact opposite experience when I went to the doctor for my flu. Yeah, I had a really professional lady that knew exactly what she was doing. 
you know, I did the fucking mouth and nose thing. Mm-hmm. And it turned out I had like, I think it was flu A, I believe. Mm-hmm. She told me to, to drink body armor to help mm-hmm. with my dehydration. And she gave me some kind of pill to help me to eat, at least to calm down my stomach to allow me to eat. Dang. Yeah, now I uh, was very upset by, by this place. And. So get home and then not like getting better at all. And then meanwhile, my boss is like, Hey, what's going on? And I'm like, I'm super fucking sick. I'm pretty sure it's COVID, you know, but I went to the doctor and they don't know what's wrong with me. But I told her, I'm like, I've lost 15 pounds. And I sent her a voice recording. I'm like, and this is what I sound like, you know, (laughs) and I sounded way worse than I do now. Yeah. And I told her, I'm like, can you uh, convert some of my vacation time onto this check? That way I can have some money come in, you know, because I hadn't worked for over a week at this point. And I told her, like, I don't know when I'm going to be back. But another week goes by and then kind of like a week and a half after I started feeling like crap is when I like started like really eating again. Like my mom ordered these um, quesadillas from a food truck and I ate the shit out of those, you know? And then um, I started just turning the corner, but I still felt like crap. And then on the 14th, I was like, okay, I have to go back to work. I've missed two weeks. If I don't get back, I'm going to get fired. (laughs) And I get back and I'm delivering that day. So I'm like, I don't have to be around people, you know, I'm going to wear a mask. So, but I still don't really have to worry about getting anyone sick, you know, because I'm going to be in the delivery van by myself and I go in to work and people are like, where you been? I'm like, don't come near me. And my voice was still gone at this point. I'm like, I'm still sick, you know? And then they look at me and they're like, God, what happened to you? I'm like, I've lost 20 pounds. <laughs> and they're like, damn. And like, my stupid ass wore jeans to work, but I forgot to put on a belt. So oh, I've lost man. 20 pounds and I'm wearing jeans that are meant for 200 pound me and they're <laughs> about to fall off. <laughs> so I did an old Walmart trick. And I took one of those long ass trash bags and I used it as a belt. <laughs> I've done that before. I've done that a shitload of times when me and Adam were in maintenance. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have to use a trash bag belt today. And I get in the van and I only had like 17 deliveries and I had like eight in the morning. So not bad. And I had the AC. The lowest it could go, I think I had it on 60 degrees, and I had it turned up because I was sweating walking to the van. And it was like 70 degrees outside, so not too bad. But the shirt I wear, it's kind of like a fabric like this, the delivery shirt we have to wear. And I was wearing jeans, so I was hot. And yeah, I had the AC on full blast. And so I make it through the day and I get home, and there was lasagna here. I had two plates of lasagna, fell asleep on the couch at 6.30, and then my mom woke me up like, don't you want to go into your bed? I'm like, yeah. And went in my room and did not wake up until 6.30 the next day when my alarm went off. So I slept for 12 hours. Damn. Damn. Without, like, any medication, you know, to put me to sleep. And then I get to work the next day, and I had more deliveries in the morning than I did the whole day before. And I'm like, this is going to be a long day. And I ended up working, like, an hour over that day and got home and same thing. Got on the couch, fell asleep, went to my room, slept more. (laughs) (laughs) And then... Monday rolls around and my throat finally feels better and I'm talking normal, you know, like I'm like, okay, I feel great. And then I get to work and three of my dispensers have called in and 
my boss wasn't there. And so when she's not there, I usually end up running things, you know, yeah. just because I've had the past experience as a manager. So I'm yelling orders across the spencing into the pickers, you know, about getting stuff done. And by the time lunchtime rolled around, which I didn't go to lunch until like two that day, I got there at 7.30. So I was starving by that time. And my voice was completely gone. <laughs> and then when I woke up yesterday, I'm like, dude, my voice was kind of crapped out. I'm like, I really don't want to miss another week of the podcast. So I'm just going to rest it today. I'm not going to talk much. And then when I woke up, well, actually throughout the day, it felt better. And then last night when I recorded my video reviewing that Brock Lesnar steak seasoning, it's kind of started to go. And then when I woke up today, I, was, I felt great, you know, and my voice, it's kind of struggling now since I've been talking a lot in this podcast, but it's getting better, you know? Yeah. But that's been my last month with COVID. I weighed myself on Monday. I'm at 187 pounds, so I've lost 23 pounds. I've yeah, See, we need to take Cody back before going yeah. for a riot. I know, dude. When I looked at my butt in the mirror, I'm like, damn, I think my ass decreased too. You started to develop the Adam ass. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hell, that was kind of what helped keep my jeans up was my ass. <laughs> and now I don't have an ass to keep my jeans up. So yeah. <laughs> There's other stuff, too, that I'm probably forgetting. I should have wrote it all down, but I'm like, dude, I'm going to have a story to tell on the podcast. And, I mean, the thing that puts the cherry on top is the tonsils, because, God, that pissed me off. <laughs> that should be, like, in your medical records they can look up, right? Yeah. I've had tonsils since I was nine years old. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. That's why I like she said that and I laughed. And so she's like, what's so funny? I'm like, I don't have tonsils. <laughs> I'm like, hey, at least I feel better because I'm laughing now, but <laughs> but but uh, I mean I rewatched Teen Titans while I was out. That was about the only thing I did. That the original watch, tea times? Yeah. Okay. And then watched WrestleMania. So, so what's, what's your opinion about WrestleMania? I thought night one was excellent. I think night two, they didn't really pace out the matches that well. Because... Do you think Vince had control in night two? No, because I read that the plan for months had been for Cody to lose. So I feel it was a Triple H thing. Well, I feel like it was both sides. That's what I've been hearing from Sean Ross up, that it was a Vince and Triple H call for Cody to lose because they wanted um, Roman to hit a thousand days. Uh, but like night two, it started off all right with Brock and Omos, and then you had that women's tag match that just you could not care less about. And then you had... Gunther, Sheamus, and Drew McIntyre, which was incredible, but it should have went longer. Dude, cause... the match I loved was honestly uh, Ricochet, Braun Strowman. Oh, was, the, uh, the men's tag match? Yeah, that yeah, was it's... fucking insane. Yeah, I freaking loved it. Street Profits, Alpha Academy, and the Viking Raiders. Yeah, when you had uh, yeah. Chad Gable do that chaos theory to Braun Strowman, and then you had Ricochet go ham, you know. That match was... Yeah, when I saw Chad Gable do that to Bro I was like, what the fuck? Because you had that, and then you had Seth Rollins and Logan Paul, and then you had the women's tag match, was all, which was all right, but then after that, you had Rey Mysterio and Dominic, Rhea Ripley and Charlotte, match. and then the main event with the Usos and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, so you had banger after banger after banger after banger after banger, you know? Yeah. And you didn't have that on night two. Like you had Gunther Sheamus and Drew McIntyre. And then I thought Bianca and Asuka sucked. I was really looking forward to that match and I thought it sucked. And then you had. I didn't watch it. 
And then you had Edge and Finn Balor, which was good, but it went a little too long. And then you had the main event, which was good, but it had a their same repetitive finish, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I thought WrestleMania was good. I thought last year was better. Maybe that's biased because I was there, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, I, I liked WrestleMania. I didn't hate it. I just thought night one was better. I think overall, it's a good WrestleMania under Triple H. Yeah. And then we got the draft coming up, which I was thinking, if I can find a good website, maybe we could do like a mock draft video. Yeah, I'll be down for that. Yeah, because I was watching uh, Wyatt's World the other day, and he did that, and he was just doing it by himself. And I'm like, eh, this is cool, but if he had another person to bounce stuff off of, you know? So I go draft everyone, including like the NXT projects? Uh, they haven't really announced what they're going to do with NXT. If it's going to be anything like the 2016 draft, maybe it'll be like, you know, like five picks off the NXT roster, you know? Uh, okay. Because they could do like Braun Breaker, Cora Jade, Roxanne Perez, um, Pretty Deadly, and someone else probably. Because they're all ready to come up, you know? Yeah. But yeah, um, I was happy that KO and Sammy won the tag belts because big fan of both those dudes. It's awesome. Kevin Owens has main evented WrestleMania two years in a row now. Now, the only thing that sucks is that WrestleMania next year is going to be in the shithole of Philadelphia. <laughs> in that <laughs> shitty-ass stadium that the Eagles play in. Yeah, that's just, just hell in, on the United States. Freaking Philadelphia just looks like it smells like shit. <laughs> it smells like muret gas and, yeah. and shit. It's a black stain on America that it used to be the capital. Yep. Okay, Cody, I got a topic for you. Right. What is your opinion on the current state of gaming? I'm definitely not a, as hardcore of a gamer as I used to be. You know, like when I was a kid slash teenager, you know, like that was like the golden era to me. Like you had Mass Effect 2 and 3 come out, which are my two favorite games ever. And then you had Assassin's Creed 2, you had Brotherhood, Revelations, and 3, and then Black Flag after that. And those were all great Assassin's Creed games. And then you had Unity, you know, which sucked. And that kind of killed my love for Assassin's Creed. And then you had games that, were like, you know, GTA 5 and Red Dead, which, you know, I enjoy not as much as Assassin's Creed and um, Mass Effect, but I still played them a lot. And I'd say since the new consoles launched, the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, all yeah. I've really played is sports games. I played Red Dead 2. I was heavily invested in that. But the last Assassin's Creed game I played was Origins, which was an amazing game. I love Origins. But all I play now is sports games. Like the most recent games I've bought have been WWE 2K23, Madden, and NBA 2K23, and MLB The Show. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So like, I'm agreeing with you. Like my go days is probably, yeah, when I was a kid and teenager. With all the FPS games, RPG games, mm. like Diablo, Call of Duty, the original Call of Duties, mm. Battle, Battlefield, mm. Medal of Honor. Oh, man. Um, hell, even the WWE wrestling games. Yeah, and that's the other thing. I don't find myself going to new games. I find myself playing old games. Like, I still play Battlefield 4. I've been replaying Mass Effect. I've replayed Red Dead. Like, I don't play any of these new games. In my opinion now, I think single-player like campaign-style games are dying. Mm -hmm. Because they're more focused on the multiplayer, money-scheming kind of games. Yeah. That's sad. And that's kind of... Because, you know, the, the thing about those single-player games is, like, you can just, like, kick back and relax just pretty much go brain-dead and play the game. Mm -hmm. Now, like, like, you just want to play a game, but you know, sweat your balls off. Then you even have, like, somewhat, like, 
enjoyment. Yeah. And, like, one thing that's really, like, pissed me off and really made me disappointed about gaming has been Grand Theft Auto V. Because this game came out in the United States on September 17th, 2023. The day of this recording, or 2013, September 17th, 2013. The date of this recording is April 19th, 2023, and a new Grand Theft Auto game has not come out yet. And there has and not been a still sing- pushing content on that game. They're still milking it. But not single player. No. If you have people like me who don't really like GTA Online and just like the single player, they haven't done shit for you. Nope. You know, I played... like, did it like maybe like three years in the game, maybe. Mm-hmm. They well, like I said, they haven't done shit for single player except update the radio. You don't have no new stories or anything. No, I've played GTA four more in the last two years than I've played GTA five. Oh, really? Yeah, because GTA four is one of the best stories to me. Like Nico is a great character, and then you have the two DLCs. Which lost in the dam, I'm not the biggest fan of, but Ballard Gay Tony, that's a great DLC. See, and I, I actually like the Lost in the Dam DLC. I like it, but I think Ballard of Gay Tony's better. I just like have I just like an idea of the GTA style with being a motorcycle game, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, and I like Johnny as a character. Yeah. But yeah, just like now, like, like the games I play now, I play. I'm playing like Overwatch two. I've been playing Fortnite here at least recently. Mm-hmm. It's just you just like want to play, just kick back and play with your friends. Mm-hmm. But you got a little Timmy over there thinking he's like the big big thing, just like just yeah. sweats or sweats on you so goddamn bad, you can feel like the goddamn ocean right across to you. Oh, biggest fucking douchebag I've ever met was at this Madden tournament. I'm a good Madden player. You've seen me play. Yeah. And, you know, I whooped a lot of people. We went to school. I whooped their ass in Madden. But had this Madden tournament, and this dude changes all the freaking settings to where he's basically hacking the game. And it's like, okay, first off, I'm telling the dude, why the fuck is he allowed to compete if he's doing this shit? You know, this ain't the fucking game. (laughs) And... Meanwhile, it's like it's basically like playing Call of Duty with a lag switch, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, fucking douchebags like that that just fucking kill the fun of the game, you know? Yeah, when I, when I started playing like, Man, I was playing that man online and I experienced that a lot of people just doing that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, I'm just like just trying to go deep, man. Calm down. And when I said the last Madden game I bought earlier. That was Madden 22. I haven't bought Madden this year. That shows how many games I haven't bought. <laughs> Last time I bought, I was 21. Yeah, because yeah, I'm protesting Madden until they fix shit. I'm protesting NBA. Madden. I'm protesting Call of Duty because Call of Duty is still shit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't. Um... And Madden is just pretty much a, a roster update, basically. Mm-hmm. Gameplay gets worse every year. This new passing shit. That, uh, that they are doing in the new game. I was watching videos of it before the game came out because I still watch the YouTube gameplay just to figure out if I'm going to buy the game, you know? Yeah. And this passing shit is horrible. What are you doing? It's like a meter where you have to time the meter and that's how good your throw is. Oh, God. Yeah. Ew. Yes, it's, it's stupid. I'm like... Okay, that means I'm just going to run. That's all I'm going to do in that game. I'm going to play as the Titans. I'm going to get Derrick Henry, and I'm going to run. That's all I'm going to do. Or Ray the, the Browns. Ravens yeah. Lamar Jackson. <laughs> yeah. Man, that's the only way you can really win in Madden, too. Like, when I played that tournament, I won two games, and then I lost to that one douchebag. And the thing was... I. The game I lost, I was using the Browns, and Baker Mayfield isn't really all that mobile, you know. But the two games I won, I used the Ravens, Lamar Jackson, and I ran for like an 86-yard touchdown with him. 
And then I played with the Cowboys and Dak, you know, is a little mobile, you know. Yeah. He's more mobile than Baker Mayfield. The big this was more bag, you pretty much win. Yeah. Cause this was before um Dak broke his ankle and you know they took his speed down. Uh yeah, so this was I think Madden 20. Okay. But yeah, this was a few years ago because I played it at the TU campus. Really? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah, that's right. They had a Madden term in TU. I remember that. Yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, even like here recently, I've been playing Yu Gi Oh! Master Duel again. Yeah. And then have like somewhat fun on that. Yeah, I, I people played start it. playing meta decks. Yeah, that's the thing. Like you have a bunch of douchebags that exploit the broken stuff in Yu-Gi-Oh. And the only thing I've really been playing is NBA 2K. I've been playing with one of my subscribers, Uncle Skeeta, and we play um the 5v5 mode. I can't remember what it's called. But other than that, I mainly oh, just man. do career. That's a flex. Yeah. And then <laughs> I what's the other thing? This career mode basically. And sometimes I'll do the a hundred coin games, you know. Yeah. But NBA 2K, it's still good to me. I know some people don't like it, but I just say it's better than Madden. Really? Yeah. And MLB the, be like the exact opposite. Now NBA 2K has been pretty good for a while. Like really? I haven't really had a problem with. To be honest, I, I problem... don't play it. I just. Actually, I had a problem with last year. I thought the career mode sucked. And online was kind of a pain, but this year I think is really good. Yeah, I just don't play. I've been reading reviews about it. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing people bitch about it. But it also kind of helps that I've kind of like re fallen in love with basketball just because the Thunder don't suck now. You know, we just made the play in tournament and played pretty good, you know? So it's like, yeah. okay, I'm more invested in basketball now too. But, like, MLB The Show, like, I don't watch baseball hardly at all. I only watch it if I'm at a, a bar and it's on, you know, and then I'll watch it. And I know enough about baseball to be knowledgeable and talk about it, but I don't go out of my way to watch it. But yeah. that being said, I watched baseball last night because there was nothing on. <laughs> but MLB The Show is a fantastic game. Road to the show, it's not really that in depth with like story, but it's basic, you know. It's better than Madden's career mode. And then franchise mode is incredible because you have your two minor league teams. So you're developing players, you know, actually developing them. And then you have your major league team. Oh, really? Yeah. And then, you know, making money matters in that game because you know baseball doesn't have a salary cap like the nfl and the nba right like yeah they can just spend whatever so if you're putting butts in seats and you're selling jerseys and stuff like that you're making money and then that's more money that you can go to sign a big free agent you know that's money you can use to go get shohei otani and then your team's freaking loaded you know yeah so that's what's great about MLB the show is like, okay, making money matters. Cause like Madden franchise mode, you, you know, you have your cap space, you know, but it's easy to, all you have to do is go in and clear cap penalties on Madden yep. and then you're good. So, yeah, or pretty much sign chief free agent and trade for a player. They like, for instance, like there's some conversation a tight end. Like you go to free agency, you get like a decent tight end, and you can pretty much guarantee you get a pro player. Yeah, and then that's the thing. Like in Madden, you can develop a player in a year. Yeah. All, all you have to do is goal line them every time you're near the end zone, you know, and throw it to them, and then they get a shitload of experience points. Like MLB The Show, it takes years to develop a dude, you know? Yeah. That's cool because mm -hmm. that's, that's more realistic than. Not yeah, that is. Yeah, like it's actually like challenging and fun, you know. Because when the problem with the Madden franchise, like if you're trying to get in depth with your like franchise mode, like mm -hmm. your ones, like your like golden year, like playing, 
then year mm-hmm. two or three is it just gets boring after mm-hmm. that yeah because okay what do i do now <laughs> yeah madden sucks now it's i mean it sucked for a long time but it really sucks now the last like when I, the first madden i played was 07 and i thought that game was fantastic and then madden 11 i thought was great madden 08 was all right Madden 12 was all right, and then Madden 13 is when I think the franchise really started to die. My first Madden I played when Drew Brees was on the cover. Madden 11. Yeah, I loved it. Mm -hmm. Because franchise mode in that game was great. Yeah, I I freaking love the franchise mode. I remember I had like a 15-year franchise mode on that one. I remember... um... They had like the actual like weekly show, you know, where it yeah. break down around the league. I'm like, that's cool. They don't have that in this year. They don't yeah, have the that in any stuff Madden. like that. Like, like keeps you like keeps the game the franchise healthy. Mm-hmm. I remember being heartbroken actually um, playing Madden because Miles Austin was my favorite cowboy growing up, and I threw a pass to him and he got hurt, and. He broke his vertebrae and his career was over in my franchise mode. And I was like, what the fuck? Just ended his career? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I remember that. Like, yeah. player, that stuff happens in that game. Yeah, they don't have that in Madden now. No. Yeah, they want to be like this most cheapest shit as possible and try to make as much money as they can. That's the thing with all these developers, too, though. I mean, reason they really haven't done anything with GTA is because GTA Online makes over a billion dollars every year as people buy those shark cards and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, okay, we're not going to put effort into this new thing because this is still our cash cow. And then, like, look at Bethesda. When did Skyrim come out? 2011? How many times have they re-released Skyrim? How much money do they still make every time they re-release Skyrim? Yeah. I mean, when did they show Elder Scrolls 6 at E3? That was what, at 2018? I think that was actually here recently. It was it was a long time ago. Because I remember um, Bildo texted me about it. <laughs> Yeah, um, Todd Howard confirmed in June 2022 that the game is still in pre-production. So this game may not come out till the PS6 and the next Xbox come out. That's probably by the time like, we're all more grown up and shit. Yeah, we're going to, well, one of us already has kids, but all mm-hmm. of us are going to have kids except for maybe Curtis and we ain't going to have time to play it. <laughs> No one curves. You probably have like a little alien baby. Alien baby. Uh. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's <let's> helpful. <laughs> so Chris, oh my you... God! Just imagine he has a little kid. It's also scared of crickets. <laughs> well, grasshoppers. I'm sorry, grasshoppers. Say, so Chris can't even take care of himself. Imagine him with a kid. <laughs> Oh, uh, bro. But to me, I was like, see him drop kicking his own kid. I could too. I think I could see all of us doing that, though. Yeah, probably. I'm not above fighting children. I'm not about fighting <laughs> kids, but when that motherfucker gives me the wrong guy, I'm drop kicking that baby. Yeah. <laughs> so kids are assholes, man. Dude, for real. Those fuckers have no filter. Dude, I'm like. That's the other thing. I'm scared to have kids at some point just because, I mean, infants are easy, you know? It's when they turn into toddlers and they're little assholes. Oh, uh, like the terrible twos and shit like that? Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like when I was over at my friend's house, her three-year-old, she was mad I wasn't looking at a cloud. <laughs> I'm like, okay. And then I had to leave because I had to go back to work and... um. Crystal had to drag her back into the house, you know, because she was trying to follow me in my car. And oh, then she man. starts screaming her head off, you know. It's like knowing that, like, 
anybody that works in retail like me and you do, mm-hmm. you're always like nine times a day you hear a fucking kid scream. Yeah. Oh god, there's kids that have freaking meltdowns in my store. Except for except for Lowe's, you either see your kids or contractors scream like babies. <laughs> yeah. That's why I like that I'm out of the store at least two days a week, you know? Yeah. But then again, I have to deliver to schools and stuff sometimes too. Oh, you, it's like, you guys deliver to schools too? Yeah. I delivered oh. to school. I delivered to one of those big fucking buildings in downtown Tulsa like two months ago. It was fucking cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that uh, community care building that's right next to BOK Tower. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I had a delivery in there, and it was pretty high up. It was fucking cool. Oh. Yeah. But all right, um, I don't think I have anything else. Let's get into this Naruto list, because I read this earlier. I was thinking about, like, okay, what are we going to talk about in the podcast? Because I thought you know, Curtis and Adam were going to be on here. And I'm like, well, Naruto is always a good topic for us. So they did this poll on Facebook of the best Naruto fights ever. And it was a global poll. And so it's fan voted. And I'm starting to think the fans trolled these people. So what do you think the number 10 fight is? Soccer and um, the blonde hair bitch. I can't remember her name. You know, yeah, Sasuke Uchiha versus Daedara. Good fight, really? Yeah, good fight. Not in my top 10, definitely not my top 10. Yeah, I like the fight, but no. Number nine, <laughs> Neji versus Kimaru. This is in my top 10. This is a great fight, it's really underrated to me. Uh, you know which one this one is. Kimaru, uh, the spider spider web dude. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay. Yeah, Sa- Sasuke retrieval arc. Yeah, I got you now. So that's a good fight. Um, it's in my top ten, so I'm glad it got some love. Yeah, Eight, that's fair. Minato versus um, Obito, basically. And that's, that that's fair. That's it fair makes one. it just for that shot right there. Yeah. Yeah, so it it deserves to be low, but I could see why people would have it in the top 10. It's not on mine, but Mike Guy versus Madara. Be honest, be... it should be higher. Yes, it should be four. I think I'd put it at number four. I'd, I'd say five or four. Yeah. That fight was awesome. Yes. Six, Sasuke versus Itachi. It... The only is it's kind of overrated. It is overrated. I do but like so it a good. lot. Yeah, I do like it a lot. It just has that stupid shit with Orochimaru, basically, and then Itachi gives up, you know? Yeah. Number five, Naruto versus Pain, which is probably either... It's either two or three for me. I'll say three for me. Yeah. Especially so, when he sees... Um, he nodded her. He just turns beast mode. Yeah, so it deserves top five. Four, Kakashi versus Obito. I mean, that's the best animated fight, I think, in the show. Other than um, Naruto versus that Otsutsuki dude. Whenever he goes Baryon. I mean, that's the best animated fight ever. That's a fair spot for it. Three, Gara versus Rock Lee, which... Is in my top three. It's probably number three. I mean, that's. I think that's a good spot for it. Yeah. Yeah, just when they introduced Nagara. Two, Naruto versus Sasuke, which I think we all knew is, this was going to be up here. Yeah, to be honest. So you ready to laugh accepted. your ass? You ready to laugh your ass off? Yeah, I'm ready. What do you think number one is? It's got to be a, some soccer match. Yep. No. Yes. The most boring okay. fight. It's if I were gonna rate this, it's probably the 15th. Mm. It's not a bad fight, but it's fucking boring at times. 
Yes, it gets boring way too many times. Because you have it mixed in with that stupid uh, where guys' team was fighting each other and then Naruto chasing Daedara. Yeah. And you know what's way more interesting? Naruto going nine tails for the first time in the show, not Sakura fighting some weird puppet dude. Because real, like the, man. like because like why is puppet, that on number one? I think this was fans trolling. It had to be. It has to be a troll. So like, if I'm redoing this fight, I'd probably do. Actually, this is hard because I have so many favorite fights. I'd probably do Naruto versus Gara number one because I love that fight. That is one of my absolute favorites. Naruto versus Pain, yeah. and then Rock Lee versus Garler. And then I'd probably have... That, that I'll agree. And then I'd probably have Naruto versus Neji 4, Kakashi versus Obito 5, and the rest I'd really have to think about. Oh my god. But yeah, like I read that list. I'm like, eh, I mean, this is a list we can talk about because there's a lot that. And then I got to the bottom and I started fucking laughing. And I'm like, this is going on the podcast. Oh my God. I wish Ad was here. I wanted to hear his reaction about that. Yeah. Maybe if he's on next week, which I mean, <laughs> hell, who knows if they're going to be on here because hell, it's the two most responsible people that are on here right now. <laughs> <laughs> But if we get him back on here, yeah, we'll show him that list. Yeah, we definitely need to show him because God, that pisses me off. Yes, like I saw that and I was like, eh, I disagree with some of these placements. I'm sorry, like, but soccer match should not be mentioned in a top ten man fight, especially in a fight where she really didn't do much. I mean, it was more Lady Chio to me. Yeah, it is. It was really more Aichio and Sasori, I, like I think that's his name. Yeah, Sasori. Not only that, the fight lasts six fucking episodes. Was it that long? Yes. it's. They don't the, that long? I think it's the longest episodic fight in Naruto. Longest fight in Naruto. Well, not counting the ninja war. Because that's... Yeah, that's fair. Actually... That's pretty much a season by itself. Yeah. Actually, Sakura and Chio versus Sasori was eight episodes. Not six. It was eight. Yawn. Yeah. Like, think about... like probably do, like, half of that. Maybe, like, three or four at best. Yeah. It is... For a shonen anime... Actually, it's not in the top 10. I thought it was. Still, it's Actually, too long for a soccer match. Actually, this list isn't even accurate because it has Naruto versus Pain at seven episodes, which it's not. But yeah, for a soccer fight, no. no. Uh, whoever, that, that had to be fans trolling. And I didn't get the memo. I didn't get the memo. I didn't either. I'm glad I didn't. But heck, they should have included Baruto fights because I definitely would have voted for Naruto versus Ishiki and Naruto and Sasuke versus Momoshiki. Yeah, those two are Bert. Yeah, those are good facts. Yeah, by the way, have you watched Baruto since it went on hiatus? No, I was um when the pirates were um when the pirates were fighting the water water nation, that's where I kind of stopped. Mm. I, I know the manga is still going on. I just know the anime stopped now, but I know there's some stuff going on in the manga that's pretty good. But if I were to guess what episode I'm on, I'm probably 247. Uh so you're a little you're a little ways back. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I didn't um I didn't find a crazy ass news story of the week. But <laughs> well, God. I kind of do. 
What did you hear about the shooting that happened in Tulsa? They went, they started a library and they went yeah. to a trip. Dude, I deliver over in that and area. Both in execution the... style. Mm -hmm. Just fucking nuts. Yeah, I'm looking right now and there's a thing about a woman found shot to death in Inola. So I had to call my dad and ask him what the hell's going on in his town. Dude, a lot of shit's been going on around here lately i mean hell you had those did you see those emergency workers that uh highway patrolmen just outside of town a semi like flattened his fucking car oh yeah funny no funny story about that that mm -hmm. fireman was in there that not in that scene mm -hmm. i helped him two weeks ago getting paint for his house mm -hmm. he came back after that incident mm-hmm I asked him, hey, just by any chance, were, was that you in that scene that when that semi hit? He's like, yeah, that was, was me. Yeah. yeah, we... Let me uh, pull it up real quick for the guys or, and girls that are watching. You speak any girls watching this shit? I know one. That's <laughs> But this is the car after it got ran over. A highway patrolman's car. I mean, that... That looks like it got compacted, you know? This is quiet there. They're all okay. Yeah. I mean, and look at the fire truck right there. That looks like it's right... Um, yeah, it's right by that freaking... You know on Pine, when you're taking that road and you see all that freaking water, it's not part of the river. It's some kind of like landlocked it, pond, bizarre. basically. Yeah. Yeah. That's where that's at, too, man. And so that was like on top of the freaking highway. Because you take that way to go to Claremore. Yeah, Man. well, I think they were like doing something with the car to happen over there, like a wreck or something. Yeah. And fucking semi just like full send it. And then, um, you know, my dad, he's a firefighter. So I heard a bunch of stories from him. And he got his phone ran over the other day on a call. Are you serious? Yeah. And then, I mean, he lives in a town with barely anyone and they've had, he they've had to go out of town for fires and stuff lately because it's been so windy that fires have been all, really bad. All wildfires. Yeah. Oh, dude, did you see those tornadoes in Norman earlier? I heard of them, but I haven't seen anything about it yet. Oh, uh, dude, they looked freaking huge. Um, Tornado, Norman. I was um, texting Katie about it because, you know, she moved down to Norman. I mean, look at this Are right here. Katie? No, um, one of those married to Derek. Oh, okay. See that right there? Yeah, that was over in Norman? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Um, I mean... That's a huge tornado right there. I don't know how bad the wind was blowing, but I mean, that's a huge tornado. And uh, credit to these people's videos that we're using right now. Um, yeah. yeah. Them. Not trying to infringe on any copyright, just showing people the tornado. But yeah. And <laughs> so that's making its way towards here. So this might be the last episode of our podcast. If uh, me and Drew oh, die no, tonight, usually we don't get stuff that bad. Yeah, I mean, hell, no, a tornado. At worst case, we get like really, really bad rain. I mean, hell, a tornado struck here what thirty years ago, and we haven't had one since. And like two years ago, we had one. Richard went around us. Oh yeah, and then hell, we had one last year. Um, yeah, that was pretty. Like just back when I was in my other house. It literally mm -hmm. went right around my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Well, hell, um, remember right before we graduated, you know, we had like eight tornado warnings when at work, and I was there for every single one of them. Oh, all those cold blacks. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that sucked. Yeah, because it... I'd be one of the few people at night there with a walkie. Like, it'd be like me, Tava, Donna... Jessica and Kayla. 
you know, so it's like I'm helping coordinate getting all these people back there, you know, because because I remember driving. I was off. I was off. I was driving by the Walmart we used to work at, mm-hmm. and it got so bad. I had to pull over into Walmart just like wait for it to clear. I remember Jessica pissed me off that night. She was just being a bitch, and um, I was supposed to leave at ten. Tornado came right before ten, and the whole freaking town comes in. And these people brought these two big fucking pit bulls and these oh, pit bulls God. got scared because of, you know, all the people around. And so they took a scared shit right in the middle of the aisle. And Jessica goes, Cody, clean that up. And I was like, I was supposed to leave 30 minutes ago. So have a good night. And I clocked <laughs> out because she fucking pissed me off. <laughs> so I don't know who cleaned it up, but sorry, bro. <laughs> Sorry, no, sorry. That was one of my proudest moments. Yeah, she was hot, but she was a bitch. Yeah, especially when she went to nights. Yeah. I ever tell you about having her husband as my Uber driver? No, you did not. Dude, I uh, it was when my car, my actually no, my grand grandma's car was broke, so she was using mine because I told her I'm like. You know, it's not that far to my house. It was right after I moved to Katusa. I can just get an Uber and get an Uber. Dude goes, yeah, my wife, she used to work at this store. I'm like, really? And I'm like, what was her name? And she, he's like, Jessica. And I'm like, bro, you're going to have to be more clear than that. I work with like four of them. And he goes, oh, she was overnights. And he's, I'm like, oh. And he started talking about how Jason was an asshole and stuff like that. And I'm like, yeah, I agree there, but... <laughs> He's like, yeah, I was going to come up here and kick his ass. I'm like, yeah, sure you were. Yeah, he was like that, like, Marine kind of guy. Yeah. Like Kyle, the Kyle attitude, basically. Yeah, he was a, he was a Kyle. <laughs> He's one drywall away fucking, fucking the world. Up. <laughs> but I'm like, small world. But I still tipped him like 10 bucks because, I mean, hell, at least it made for good conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, she, I, yeah, that was right after she quit. Oh, bro, another freaking podcast and we didn't do the Cleveland story. Where it was just you and me. Because I was thinking a month later, that's when we went to Cleveland. Oh, shit. Yeah. I mean, we had a lot to talk about in this episode and. Hell, yeah, there's still more you, on my mind. To be honest, we're this time. episode, you need to describe why you was gone. Yeah. So that's, I mean, hell, that's fair. <laughs> hell, I, get, I don't even know how I'm going to do this thumbnail. Um, maybe I'll take a picture of me uh, passed out and be like... <laughs> no, just get a tube so I'll say Rip Cody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anything else you want to talk about, bro? <laughs> oh, I'm good. All right. I um, uploaded a video yesterday of my review of the Brock Lesnar Bearded Butcher's Blend Steak Seasoning. So if you guys are curious about trying that, uh, you can watch my review of it and hear my thoughts of it. It's only about an eight-minute video, so if you want to check it out. I mean, it's the first actual video I've done in a while. Um. So I feel like it turned out really good. Took a lot of effort making the freaking thumbnail, dude. Like the thumbnail, they kept saying it was too big. And I'm like, I'm used to fitting in the tight holes so I can fix this. And I ended up having I ended up having to remake the whole damn thumbnail. And um I compressed it to a smaller size. And then it fit. Nice. Yeah. Fit right a little charcoal surface. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, uh, a quick story yesterday. I'm taking my trash out and then a car pulls up to my house and I'm like, I recognize that and it was freaking Drew. Yeah, I saw some gay guy wearing Cowboys t-shirt. I was like, that's gotta be Cody. I pulled up the like, yep, that's my little beer hubby. Hey, you can't hate on C D Lamb or Micah Parsons. No, I just I can hate on the Cowboys. Yeah, dude, I'm just waiting. Nice. You get all that fucking free agent signings. You just end up going to eight nine eight eight wherever. Now, nah, bro, we're gonna be pretty good just because 
I mean, Brandon Cook, Stephon Gilmore, and we still have the draft coming up. Drafts. Yeah, you gotta realize who's your, who's your head coach. <laughs> He, I thought he did good this year. Um, we'll see how he is calling plays this year now that Kellen Moore's gone. That's what I'm saying. He's like he's now like the head guy calling calls now. Yeah, and then um, I mean it's a freaking miracle that Zeke's gone. But Drew, thank you for being on here, bro. I appreciate you. Appreciate your consistency. Um, compared As to. Always. The other two bitches that are on here, you know, we apologize for missing the last month, but said I was dying. We didn't have much to talk about, and none of these guys know how to record a podcast or edit it. (laughs) Real. Yeah. So, Drew, thank you, man. I'll talk to you later. I see you. And have a good night, everybody.